welcome back to my astro imaging journey channel uh, now we're going to be going through the subframe excuse me subframe selector process we already used the script before uh, in the post imaging session uh, you know to make sure our uh, uh, captured images were at least somewhat okay but that was using the script in version 1.8.6 they actually made it into a process so we're going to open that up and as you can see now we have three windows to deal with so let's rearrange them a little bit <clears throat> excuse me so the first thing we're going to want to do is a pure routine we want to measure the subframes okay and then we're going to add our files now this is going to be our debayered files at least if you're using uh, <clears throat> one shot color or uh, dslr we had to debayer them so that's what we're doing in this particular process so we're going to select all of them we're going to open and we're going to come down here to the system parameters and what is our scale uh, the easiest way to do this I'm going to uh, show that to you real quick here so we're going to come into sequence generator pro we're going to go up here to file open image and then we're going to navigate to it really doesn't matter uh, I like to use the original file. We're just going to select one. And we're going to let it open up. Then we're going to right click on it. We're going to do a plate solve. And just go ahead. This was. We're doing what? M81? Yes, M81. I know my image scale is 0 0.4 and we're just going to go ahead and do a solve. So we have a scale of 0.4. Okay, now I already knew what my scale was. So that was just to confirm it. But what we can also do is we can right click on this, go to plate solve and just click this blind solve. We can import our object and do a blind solve. And as you can see down here, it's sending it to astrometry.net. And we'll wait until that comes back and we should have the same scale. All right, as you can see, that took a little bit over a minute and came back with a 0.4. So we will go back to PixInsight. So what is our scale? 0 0.4. Our camera gain. This is why it was so important for those of us using DSLRs to do what we did in chapter one. We use that basic CCD parameters or properties or whatever uh, process that was or script that was and we re ended up with this here. Ah, yep, it was parameters. So what we're looking for is our camera gain, electrons per data unit, or data number. So we're gonna come over here, and it's this E slash ADU. Again, we're gonna use the highest value for the channels, and it's a 0 0.141. It's our highest. So we're going to come back over here. 0 0.141. Our camera resolution, it's a DSLR, so it's a 14 bit. It's a Canon uh, DSLR. Okay. And we're going to leave our scale unit at arc seconds. I also wanted to point out that for this subframe scale, uh, there is a mathematical equation up there on uh, light vortex 
astronomy's uh, tutorial page. Uh, if you want, if you prefer to do a little math on your own, by all means, you know, it takes into account uh, your sensor size, your focal length, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I find open up uh, Sequence Generator Pro or or whatever else you have that can do a blind solve, and you know it'll it'll give it to you roughly about the same amount of time, if not faster. So uh, I just use that. All right. So the next area we're going to go to is our star detector parameters. Now he says we can go down to a four on here in most cases, but the default should work. Um, you know, uh, at this focal length, my stars are pretty uh, large in comparison to the shorter focal lengths. So I'm going to leave that as a five, but I am going to bring up my noise uh, to a two with a DSLR. Uh, they are generally pretty noisy. So I'm going to bring that up to a two as he recommends. Then I'm going to collapse this back down. And we've made sure we are set to measure. And then we're just going to hit apply global. And we're going to let this run and see what we end up with. All right, that has completed. Took about 17 and a half minutes. 243 succeeded. We can come over here and we can look at the three values that are important to us. FH, FWHM, eccentricity, and SNR weight. Uh, at this point, if we wanted to, we could exclude some frames, uh, look at our graphs down here, and you know, if we had any outlier, severe outliers, we would uh, remove them accordingly. But we're going to use all the frames uh, that we can. Uh, if you go over to LVA's uh, tutorial page, he does a good explanation of uh, the approval and weighting uh, using uh, pixel math. I'm not going to get into that. Uh, he's got a much more detailed uh, explanation than I can get into. A better understanding of it so I encourage you to go over there and uh, read that for yourself but the one thing that he does have is a nice equation based off of David Alt's equation that's slightly modified so I'm going to paste that in here and David Alt's takes into consideration more noise factor um, Chiron's takes into account uh, S and R weight as opposed to noise as a bigger factor so we're gonna we're gonna use that since this is based off of the light vortex astronomy's tutorial and not David Alt's and so we're just gonna paste that in there and hit this little arrow on the side and we're gonna see the weights change here the weight values and the weights should range from 50 to 100 with 100 being the best we seem to be pretty uh, mid-range so we'll do an index on the weight and ascending so 68 is our lowest 87 is our best so not too terrible. So what we're going to want to do is double click on that and open it up. I'm going to move these out of the way so we can look at our image. It's a little off center, but whatever our best image is going to be is going to be our reference. So let's close that one out. Open up the next best. That one's a little more centered as well, but 
Let's see if I can get an even better one. I don't think it has to be exactly centered to be our reference. But that first one was just a little too off center. So we will go with our second one in the list. We're going to write down in Notepad some details on that file name. So we're going to go with 7C01010. Two five three or two three five nine one eight. Those are going to be our differentiating uh, variables in the file name, so we can set that one as our reference later on. So again, if you want to know more about the pixel math that's going on uh, here. Uh, go over to Light Vortex Acad uh, Astronomy's webpage and check out those tutorials. Uh, he does a good job of expl explaining those. You can put in here, uh, for example, if you want your full with half max to be a minimum of one and a maximum of three, you could put some uh, expressions in here to limit that and it would automatically select and deselect. Uh, the images accordingly. Alright, so now we need to actually take these and the weights that we've assigned in this column here we need to append into the fits headers. We're going to give it the keyword. Uh, this came up default SS weight. We're going to leave that as is. Then we're going to come up here to the routine and say output subframes and our real selective directory and we will call that weighted and we'll just leave it with that post fix and then we'll apply global so now it's writing the files and we'll be back when that's done all right, and that has completed. Took a little over 23 minutes. Uh, the purpose of this was to assign a weight based on the quality of the image uh, that ranged from 50 to 100, 100 being the best. Uh, the more, the higher the weight, the more that data is going to be relied on when we stack these images later on. So. We are done with the sum, subframe selector process. So I'm going to create my process icon. And we'll close this out. And let's open up one of those files just any one of them and we're going to look at the fits header and if you scroll all the way to the bottom there's that weight that we just injected so we'll be able to uh, use that later on just remember that name, SS Weight. And with that, uh, we're done with uh, this chapter. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, ring that bell. And as always, I appreciate you. Clear skies.